we're on. Very exciting. Very exciting. Our first chemistry video. Am I on? Yeah. I look good, don't I? Don't I, don't I make this look good? Yeah. Okay. Now, first, first chemistry video here in Phnom Penh. We have Cambodian. Cambodian. Pakistan. Okay. Cam no. Uh, don't tell me. Uh, Korean. Okay. Uh, Cambodian. 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 Texas. Okay. Excellent. Texas. Uh, Lauren told me Texas is a separate country, and I like that. Very good. Texas has succeeded. It's never joined the Union. Is that, isn't that correct? Well, 1839, you just, that was it, right? And you, it has we, the tariffs to succeed, but it would not be able to function economically on its own since it relies heavily on the other countries since it's being exported as oil, I think, or corn. Excellent. She knows her stuff, I'll tell you. Never say she is a Texan without knowledge. Excellent. So let's begin. What we're going to look at today, we're going to look at ionization energies. We're going to look at a bunch of things with ionization energies. They did their graphs. May I see your graph, please? That graph, may I see that graph there? Yes. Hand it to me. All right. So they did their graphs. That's first ionization energy. Can you see that? Does that come out? Is that good? And you can see there's a lot of peaks and valleys. You see that? Is that good? Like that? Okay. Just like peaks and valleys. And we're going to look at why we have those peaks and valleys. I'm going to put some up with this tab. This is, uh, these, are, these are orbitals. An orbital is somewhere you're going to put the electron, right? And this is going to be S and this is going to be P. What we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the second period and the third period first. And then we'll look at some D's and F's. Okay? Yes? Okay, now. We did electron configuration. We did all that stuff. Yes? Now we want to look at some things with periodicity. Okay? Now we see that this is going to be sodium here. Let's say we're doing three. Okay? So that's sodium. Does that come out? Does that come out on the thing? Yes? yes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to call we're going to call this we're going to call this 11. We're going to make this the Z. Okay, this is going to be Z. So it's going to be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so we can and I'm glad we're doing this actually because we have a you know one of the big guys one of the big dogs of the school is here. He's being very discreet. And I use whiteboards exclusively. You see, I think that we should have, we went from textbook-centered, we went from textbook-centered curriculum to child-centered curriculum, and now we have, we have what? We have data projector-centered curriculum. And I like to get away from that. So I like a lot of whiteboards around so kids can do work, and kids can work on the board. So, and this is just, we're doing a 10-minute quick video on ionization energy so they, they can look back and see why we have the major trends that we have. May I see your paper again? May I see your paper again? Okay. So why we have these major peaks, especially in the beginning, peaks and valleys, right? So I want to make sure that we understand the filling, and you can look back at that at some of the more important material relative to periodicity, okay? So if I'm going to put the first electron in, I'm going to put it, I'm going to make the first electron pointing up. I'm just going to say that's positive one half because we're going to say that that's going to be our strategy we're going, to, we're going to say it's going to be positive one half that's the s spin etc second one is going to be negative one half that's what we're agreeing on as a class okay so if you're going to graph this okay and let's say it's 11 let's say we're starting here we're starting here at 11 okay it's going to be somewhere here let's say in other words what is what does it take to get that electron from the orbit. What does it take? The energy. In other words, here's my, here's my sodium, okay, that's sodium, and here we have the different energy levels, okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven here. What does it take to get that electron? This is the Bohr model. What does it take? The ionization energy, you remember, is the energy needed to to get that electron away from the orbit, to make it, to go from 
sodium without a charge to an electron plus sodium with a charge. What is the energy it takes? What energy do I have to put in there? Uh, the ionization energy in order to do that. What does it take? Yeah, you get it? Yes? What's the energy that it takes to do that for that ion? Okay? Okay, so that's really what we're doing. So let's just, we're going to start somewhere and we're going to say that that electron, fairly easy to take off. Uh, what's, your, what's your take on it? Would it be an easy thing to take off or, an, or a hard thing to take off? And why? Why would it be easy or hard? I want to put something up here as you're answering the question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ling Ling, what do you think? Yes, anybody? Yes. I think it would be easy because the ionization charge is not that high, and also there is a separate electron on its own ring. I've said all the others on the four molecules. Okay, I like that. Okay, what else? If you take that electron off, what's its new valence shell? Look at a periodic table. You have your book with you? I meant your textbook, but that's okay. Do you know what? Look at, look at any of those periodic tables that you made. What's the, if you take that, if you take that off, if you take that electron off, right, what's the new valence shell look like? What is it? It has a valence shell of what? Look at the periodic table and tell me, this is big, Uncle, this is big. This is big. This is going to what separates the H and the S's, okay? I mean, no offense, none. But this is the way you've got to think. I don't use, you know, you have Voldemort, you know, the name that must not be, I have what we call the octet rule that I never use because I, I think it's great if you're recovering from brain trauma, you want to use the octet rule. I think it's a good thing. But I don't like the octet rule. It's silliness. What, how many electrons does sodium have if you remove one? Ten. All right, good. Go to the periodic table and find what element quite naturally has ten electrons always. Neon. What is it? Neon. Neon. And what kind, from your MYP, what, what is the nature? What's the nature? What's the nature of that column? What is it? They're the noble gases. All right, now. Give me a characteristic of those noble gases, Munkle. They don't want to give up their electrons. They don't want to give up electrons. Why? Because they have They're stable. That's right. Exactly. Right? Yes or no? Yes. They're stable. Don't take one of my electrons because they're full. Isn't that neon? Yes. Full S, full P, right? Yes. How many electrons are there? Oh, don't say that number. You can't say that number. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12. You can't use that number. But do you understand that... It's really not an octet rule. It's a noble gas rule. An atom is going to quite easily give up an electron if the result of that operation is a valence shell just like neon, just like a noble gas. What's the element under sodium? <coughs> What's the element under sodium? Potassium. Potassium. Okay, good. If potassium gives up an electron, what's its valence shell look like? Argon. Argon. Is argon a noble gas? Mm -hmm. Is it going to quite easily give up that electron to be like that noble gas? It's not? Is potassium going to be like sodium and give up that lone electron if the payoff is to have a noble gas valence shell arrangement? Of course. We're going to do sodium, okay? This is going to be neon. That's what's going to be left over. You see that? That's going to be neon. That's what I want to put down here. This is neon here. But I didn't put that in. 
See? So let's say it's love. Can we agree that this ionization energy is going to be low, yes or no? Okay. Next. That electron. Let's underline the electron that's being removed. Can you see that? Maybe, you know what? I'll put that electron, I'll make that in red. The electron being removed. Right? What about that? <coughs> More difficult to remove or easy to remove? What's the story? What do you think? What's your intuition say? More difficult because it's paired. It's paired. They have opposites, so there's something holding them together. There's an opposite spin. Yes? There's something going on there. And it's going to be more difficult. So we could easily say that that's going to be more difficult to remove. Are we okay with that? Okay, now let's go to the next one. Next one is what element is the next one? What element is the next one? Oh, it's... Ling Ling? No. What is it? 13. Very important. At one time, it was more precious than gold. Aluminum. Aluminum. At one time, or aluminum, what do you say in Cambodia? Aluminum. Oh, you say aluminum? Aluminum. Al aluminum. And there's a funny story about why some people say aluminum and some people say aluminum. It's a great story. So, at one time, aluminum was more precious than gold. What is, what ore, what's the name of the ore that aluminum comes from? Anybody know? Bauxite? Big, big, big product. Big product. Bauxite. Very inexpensive now, as opposed to years ago when it was very difficult to separate. Okay? Now, if I remove that electron, I have a full shell, a full orbital. Easy to remove, or what? Easier than this one, or what? What's the story? What do you think? Yeah, very good. You're getting this. Yeah, it's going to be, you get a little dip. There's your first dip. Okay? That's 13. Okay? We'll put a little number there. We'll put this as 12. This is 13. Now, let's go to the next one. The next one says this. And then you get this. Okay? A little harder. Yes? We're in, the, we're in that kind of land where it gets a little harder to remove there, right? Yes? Okay, so it's going back up. Nothing, nothing, nothing exciting there. Yes? Why is it harder when it's not paired? Well, because you're almost, you're almost half full. A half full P is very stable. Half full P's are very stable. If you look at your chart, we're going to look at it in a minute. But find on your chart where each of these electrons are, each of these red electrons, okay? Because you're almost half full here. I know, it sounds like I'm making this up as I go along, doesn't it? A little bit? I know. I know. I get that all the time. And there's other reasons, too. Now, why would this one, what do you think about this one? What do you think about that one? Anybody? Yeah, that one's, that one's a little hard. That one's a, that one's a tough one. Okay, this is 14, 15. And what about this one here? Yeah, yeah. Why is that going to be easier? Yeah, you're getting that half, right, you get a, a half-filled P is very stable. So if I get rid of that, it's a little easier. You're left with a half-filled, fairly stable state. That half-filled P is very happy. And we'll, that will make a little bit more sense when we do some molecular geometry and we do some bonding. Yes? Yes? In other words, this is half-full. That's a P. When the P is half full, a very stable state. So that one is easier to remove. So there's a little dip here with 16. 
Now you're going to see that, just give me a second, you're going to see that, look at your groups, look at um, what, what, what element is 16? Source with an S. Oh, gave it away. Sulfur, right? Look, look, what's above sulfur? Oxygen. All right, now look at, find your, find eight and 16. Do you see something similar there? Find eight. Do you see that you have that same dip between 16 and 15 as opposed to seven and eight? Yes or no? You get that same dip, don't you? Yes? Right? You get that same dip. I'm, not, I'm really not making this up as I go along. Though it sounds like it, doesn't it? Okay, next. We have... We have... So this one is going to be... Is that right? Right? Is that right? Yes? I don't think so. Is that right? Am I doing this right? All right, so we're not going to here. Right, I put 10 on it, I went to what, 8, sorry. All right, and that's going to be up here. You're going to get more difficult, yes, because it's paired. Remember, it's paired, right? It's not like this one, it's not paired, okay? So that's a little easier to move, so that's paired, okay? That's gonna be a little tougher, okay? That's 16, no, 16 is easier, right? Well, this is 16, 17. And then what about this one here? This is all full. It's a noble. It's a noble gas. So you're going to get what? You're going to get what? You're going to get what? You're going to go up here, aren't you? You're going to get this giant spike even up there, <coughs> right? Noble gas, right? So you get these. You get these two areas where you get this. Contra contraindications, yes? And there's the filling in that kind of helps you with a start. There are other reasons too, but I just wanted you to look at the filling, look at your periodic tables that you did and see if you can make a connection here. Okay, that's the first one. So that's gonna be the filling of the S&P, periods two and three, very similar graphs. Easy? Yes or no? Good, okay.